Howdy! Today on Full Figured Folks Finagling Firewood for Fun and Fitness, I'm going to show you a few tricks and tips I've picked up over the years to try to mitigate back pain and the need to bend over quite so much. Because firewood is work. No matter what you do, there's still hands-on and a lot of it involves bending over. So I'm going to show, like I said, I'm going to show you a few things to mitigate that. These are a few of the tools I've picked up. These are all considered hookeroons. The difference between a hookeroon and a pickeroon is very subtle. This one would be the best example. If this metal here was thinner and the hook was less hooky and more of a straight pick and a little less beefy, they would generally consider that a pickaroon. This, given its hookiness, is considered a hookaroon. Although this one, according to the company website, is a hookaroon also, and by golly, that sure looks like more of a pick to me. But anyway, I guess the interwebs is only as good as what people put on it. These, I have used these over the years, I've kind of left them sit for a while, and I, I, was, I think I was judging them too harshly. I was asking them to do too much. For moving cut and split firewood, they all seem to work very well. What I wanted them to do was move, you know, a 20 inch long, you know, 20 inch diameter piece of a log. And for that, they're not that great. This first product is made by the fine folks at the Still or Steel Corporation, depending on what part of the country you're in and how bad your accent is. This is their, they list this as a hookeroon. And again, this works really good for this type stuff. I have a funny story about this. I'll show you how to use it and then I'll tell you the story here. really doesn't take much effort and you can see I don't have to bend over much at all. <clears throat> a few years ago when I was using this to move unsplit cut sections of log, I had grabbed a hold of one, hunked in, and as I was picking it up, unfortunately my nose face was in a bad area while well, the wood came off as I was lifting it. It was a heavy piece of wood. So this went from zero to smack my nose really hard in about a split second. And I don't know if you can see, but the tool's got a little bit of a bend to it. Well, let's just say the tool went a long way before it impacted. <laughs> and I said probably more than a few bad words at the time. Thankfully, my nose was not injured. It's big enough that it absorbed the blow, but it just, yeah. Right. Cool. This next one, I'm not sure who made it. It's uh, obviously blue. I know Dixie, I believe Dixie Logging Tools uses a blue similar to that, although I, theirs might be a little lighter colored, but it works good when you use it right. This one is made by Husky or Husk Varna, and I like this one a lot when I'm using my trailer because you can stay on one side of the trailer and reach across and hook stuff to you to put on the racks. So this is actually, I, get, I use this a fair amount. Again, the way I was trying to use these before, I think I was overdoing it. None of these I don't believe would be really designed to move full unsplit rounds. 
unless it was something real light. We're up in the north woods with oak, so everything's heavy up here. So, These, I'm not sure if there's a technical name for them other than sharp hooky thing, rubber hose doohickeys. And they work good, except you can see that, oops, unless I want them to, there's a lot more bending over involved. And unfortunately with these, really these work with longer pieces of firewood a lot better. I used these quite a bit a couple of years ago when I was processing wood in the front yard because I would cut and split it and stack it and then I would take it from the stack, put it on the trailer and haul it back to our wood racks. So you could walk up to the stack, foomp, grab two, turn around, set them in the trailer. For this kind of stuff, if they came with an extension handle, they'd probably be a lot better, but they don't. All right, now I've shown you all the other, the hookaroon, pickaroons, whatever you want to call them. This is an S-Wing camper's axe. And I've had these for quite a few years. You can see this one's been run hard, put away wet, used a lot. And I don't remember exactly when I figured out that this had a dual purpose, other than just cutting wood or trimming branches off a tree you had fallen, felled. But I also found out that it works as good or better than those other tools. Plus, I can use this one to move the heavy rounds that aren't split yet. You don't take much force. And, uh, you know, with anything, there's a learning curve. If you try this, you're either probably going to start out hitting too light or you're going to hit too heavy. You will get the hang of it, though. Gives you a nice, satisfying whack when you stick it in, too. I was telling you, those other little, the other hookaroon tools and stuff like that are great for the wood that's already split and ready to stack on your, your drying racks, your storage racks, but you need to go from log to something like this, and this needs to be transported over there. Now, I could bend over and pick it up, but I only have so many of those a day. So... It's transported. I didn't have to bend over much. This makes a Jim Dandy handle. It takes a little bit of the strain out of your hands, whereas having to grab those and carry them all the time is kind of arduous and gets, gets ouchy after a bit. There's one other trick or tip I want to impart before we go. Um, as you get older, your hands tend to get a little weaker. It certainly happened with mine. And I have found that using normal or standard type gloves with handled tools, this, this, this one's actually got grippy, rubber grippy, but it's, you know, that stuff only stays grippy so long. And my splitter and my sledgehammers are either plastic handled or wooden handled. And there's no real grip factor. And so I find that I have to really squeeze hard or I feel like I'm going to let the tool fly. So
So what I've done is I use the uh, the uh, gloves that have the little grippy dots on them, and that I find after a day of splitting, my hands hurt a lot less using those because I don't feel like I have to put such a death grip on. And this is about 10 cords of a 20 cord pile we had purchased a few years ago when we had a logging done on the property. And uh, I, I actually cheated with this. I had some young fellas come in and cut up about half of it for me. And hopefully they'll come back this winter and cut the rest of it up. And this is the working pile that's awaiting splitting. I got about halfway through it early spring and summer until it got too hot to be out here doing this kind of foolishness. At least an 88 degree heat and high humidity. And this is the finished product ready to be transported to the racks. Those are 24 feet long and they're piled to about four and a half feet high. And most of the wood in those is about 20 inch long. This is mostly for my shop stove. So, firewoods work, folks. There's no doubt about it. There's no way of getting around it. But if you do certain things, it can take a little bit of the ouch out. Thank you for watching. Howdy folks, today I'm going to show you, cut, howdy folks, today I'm going to show you, why do I, howdy folks, today on, this next one, I'm not sure who made it, again this would be considered I believe a hookeroon, and given the blue color it might be made by Dixie, uh, logging tools but I'm really not sure and it works good it's got you know I put the rope on there to try to protect the wood a little bit but works good if I actually hit the thing right 